Hi there, I'm Edwin Davis, Senior Architect and Solutions Engineer at Aurora. A few months back, we collaborated with Symantec to discuss the evolution of cloud security. As we continue to use the cloud, and with the introduction of 5G, SASE continues to be top of mind for security leaders of today. If you're still trying to wrap your head around SASE and what makes it unique, check out this video. I actually think about what are the benefits of, of what, what it offers to us here. And so, you know, at Aurora here, you know, being your strategic partner, we go beyond just kind of doing professional services for you. I want to take full advantage of what the SASE architecture you know, can do in terms of helping you identify sort of multiple users and devices as they interact with the network and then apply policies uh, based on security and access protocols, you know, related to applications and data and, and how you're using them essentially, right? So unlike sort of that traditional model that I was describing to you in the first few slides, where the centralized information was kind of controlled around that single policy, you know, Aurora will really be able to help you enable your organization to provide security access regardless of where the, the users are, the applications or devices are located, essentially embracing that full SASE uh, architecture comprehensively. And so when we look at things, we're looking at things like cost, for example, right, securing the various aspects of a distributed network architecture um that incorporates sort of multiple points can be pretty costly right and in, in, in terms of undertaking right and so every security solution you know you'd have, have to monitor it you'd have to update it and maintain it and that of course requires resources and so rather than that approach essentially we'd be looking at really deploying the sassy solution as a single platform right and that would provide a more comprehensive approach to the security and significantly obviously reduce the it expenses and kind of freeing up your resources uh, needed in order to maintain the environment. And also in addition, like we're looking at improved performance, right? So the cloud native aspect of SASE itself is both scalable and sort of streamlined, right? It allows users um, to access applications and data from any endpoint without having to jump through various hoops, VPN and, 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 and what we're used to from you know, the traditional model. And so it really turns um, that work and collaboration into a faster, uh, approach really for being able to do that and working uh, collectively with various teams. And one of the inherent advantages of, of cloud-based infrastructure is, is really its flexibility, right? We have new features and controls, potentially protocols that can be added at a whim, right? Because it's cloud and it's being managed in the cloud. And again, we don't have to maintain rollout patches and those things in order to get that, which requires time and resources in order to accomplish those. We also look at sort of the reduction in complexity, right? So managing multiple and secure um, security products obviously is a challenge we all know that we've been there. And so the consolidation really of the IT network and security stack essentially uh, into this cloud service model is gonna help with that. We have, you know, it basically is valuable IT resources essentially um, can be, you can manage and update and maintain security access controls, you know, from again, that single point I was mentioning to you rather than having these multiple systems and multiple consoles to have to access, this really does uh, help to shift uh, the, the focus and, and better utilize everyone's um, time in terms of uh, being able to maintain the environment. The threat prevention side of it is good as well because it basically helps to give you greater visibility in terms of you know, risk mitigation, right? All users, applications and devices essentially uh, can be monitored and managers, managed, sorry, um, regardless of the location. And so um, it becomes more important um, that the uh, separate controls be placed around each one of these. And so having that capability obviously allows us to be able to reduce the, the risk and mitigate those and remediate those uh, quicker uh, based on the, the ability to have the controls around each one of those. And that kind of takes us back to sort of that zero trust security model um, where you have that uh, micro perimeter, which many of you are probably familiar with, with having that around the, the data and the asset. The data protection as well is, is one of the things that, you know, we all know <laughs> and is near and dear to our hearts. We know that, you know, data loss of any kind of sensitive information can have tremendous consequences on our organization. And so consolidating that, consolidating, sorry, that architecture that applies sort of that um, policy-based security around every level of the network and architecture really does help um, to protect that data, depending on, you know, regardless of where it's located. So having that overarching uh, data protection 
uh, also coupled into the equation here uh, definitely helps. And last but not least, the zero trust. Again, you know, this framework assumes basically any user, any device, or any application, you know, connecting to a network is a potential threat. You know, there's no question about that. We've seen that um, with the increase in, in breaches and, and various things that we see on a daily basis. And so we want to make sure that that is definitely at the foundation of what SASE uh, has to offer is really making sure that we do the zero trust approach by removing that trust assumption, right? You know, whether the user is off or on the corporate network, um, you know, the cloud-based nature of SASE itself, like I said, allows organizations to provide that complete session protection um, at, no matter where you are. 